Welcome to another Inktober video. Today, we're going to be talking about walnut ink. If you happen to be new to my channel, welcome so much for joining me. My name is Tony Hunt and I do videos about art, art supplies, and healing crystals. If you like that kind of thing, stick around. I would love to have you. So today we're going to be talking about walnut ink. As I said before, it is very fun to work with, but I don't hear a lot about it. So we're going to go over some of the things I use along with my walnut inks, which kinds I have. I found these beautiful leaves outside. Now in Kansas City, when I'm filming this, there's not a whole lot of pretty foliage falling yet. This happens to be my neighbor's tree and there's only maybe a dozen leaves that's turned. And I went and stole these. But this one's just beautiful. I took some photographs of it so I can do maybe some ink drawings of it. Some colored ink. I just thought that was really, really neat looking. So maybe today we'll do one of these guys. Because walnut ink, I don't want to use a leaf that has too many colors in it. So I might do a quick demo later with these. A lot of people don't know what all you can use walnut ink for. Well, you can paint with it. You can draw with it. You can do whatever you want. So this is just a little little picture I did oh I'm mean, maybe last year using just walnut ink probably a paintbrush that's my favorite way you can use a paintbrush and you can water these down with water use them straight however you'd like a lot of people also like to use their own nibs or calligraphy glass pens you can draw with these in walnut ink however you choose to do it these are the two walnut inks I own at the moment now, back in the day, walnut ink was made from walnuts, that fruity green stuff on the outside of a walnut that you see. Um, after that ripens, it turns black. I don't know if you've ever held a walnut in your hand, it stains your hand black. Well, that's what walnut inks used to be made out of. I think they might have been acidic, but I'm not sure. But nowadays, these are not made from walnuts anymore. Anyway, you boil down the fruit, it makes a stain a blackish stain neither of these products are made from walnuts they are acid free and safe just so you know the backstory to this so let's take a peek at these this bigger bottle is by tom norton and as you can see here you can layer it up to get pretty deep or you can thin it out with some water and the other kind is my daniel smith walnut ink this is just a little bit warmer than the Tom Norton. This comes off a little cooler. It's hard to tell through the video, but the Tom Norton is actually just a tad bit cooler in color. Now, along with some of my drawings, and the one I showed you earlier was all walnut ink, I also use some other inks, and I have a lot of these Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen Fine Liners. Everybody loves these. Um, these colors here, are in dark sepia. I use these along with my walnut inks a lot, as you can see. It's very close to the same color. Sometimes I use the fine liner and brush for little details that I can't get with an actual paintbrush. The one I use a lot is the Faber-Castell Walnut Brown Artist Pit Pen. It's just barely cooler. It's more like a coffee color, but this is the one that's actually called Walnut Brown. The only pen I have in this color is a nice brush tip. This is a lovely pen. All right, another co company, Statler. This is, you know what, there is no color on here, but it looks just like the uh, Walnut Brown color. So I have a couple of these I throw in. Now I have this in my Walnut Ink Stash, though this is a very warm brown it, uh, this it's from king art i got this probably in some kind of box but it has a really neat chisel tip and since it's that warm color sometimes you might need that so i threw it in with my walnut ink supplies i have a couple of these le pens by marvy i've gotten a few of them in subscription boxes in just brown very nice fine line i have no problems with this pen whatsoever now let me see if i can it may not show, but this almost has like a plum undertone to the brown, which makes lining things a little more interesting if you want to make it a variation to your browns. 
This almost looks a dark purplish plum brown color. In my walnut ink arsenal, I have a Faber-Castell Polychromos in walnut brown for doing sketching. Usually I don't add a whole lot of this on top of my painting or picture. This is really just to sketch out my drawing and it matches. Now this one I will use from time to time. I also sketch with this, but this is their uh, watercolor pencil in walnut brown. And as you can see, just like most watercolor pencils, it will react wonderfully. All right, there's a quick overview of some of the items I use when I'm doing walnut ink pieces. As you can see, not everything is called a walnut ink, though these aren't truly walnut inks anymore anyway. But yeah, they're drawing ink, so I use a wide variety of other inks with it. Let me do a quick demo of those pretty leaves I found earlier today. Real quick, I actually just picked out a few of my walnut supplies out of my collection. I don't like to have too many in front of me. It might get overwhelming. Today I'm going to choose the uh, Tom Norton's walnut ink. I'm going to use that with my brushes. I'm going to use both of the uh, Faber-Castell pencils, probably mostly the watercolor one to do my initial sketch, but you never know, so I'm keeping this out. And here is the walnut brown brush tip liner and just a fine liner in case I need to do some detailing. All right, let's get into it.
here's my finished leaf with my walnut inks. I always have a fun time working with walnut ink, and I think that's what everyone forgets. Did you have fun with the medium? If you did, well, it's, it's the medium for you, and I do enjoy a good walnut ink. I hope you're enjoying my October videos of ink so far. Let me know down below what you were up to this October, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!